So I made a video about the death of Pretty Boy R&B. Got a lot of comments, really interesting comments. So I wanted to make a part two to that video. Interesting comments on TikTok. And so let's talk about this. So yes, the, the thesis statement is that Pretty Boy R&B is dead and it's been replaced by uh, F Boy R&B or Toxic Lover R&B. Um, so Pretty Boy R&B was the Michael Jacksons, the Ushers, there's Justin Timberlakes, Justin Bieber's, Chris Brown's, Trey Songs, um, and the F Boy Toxic Lover um, is more like The Weeknd, Ty Dollar Sign. So here's the thing, because there's so many interesting conversations that sparked off off of it. People mentioned Giveon, people mentioned Lucky, and other you know R&B singers. You know, they mentioned them and they were like, well, they are not, well, they sort of like are describing them as pretty boy R&B, but actually what I would specifically de uh, define pretty boy R&B is either one of these two things or both of them. And that is um, the six pack, you know, the six pack and the pretty makeup and all that stuff, pretty hair, six pack. Uh, just being pretty, right? Like, and not pretty. Obviously, uh, beauty is in the be in the eye of the beholder. Um, so, some people might think some of them are pretty or not. But I'm talking about the look, the aesthetics, right? The 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 being uh, refined, right? Perfect haircut, you know, makeup. Obviously, you guys don't notice that they they have they wear a lot of makeup. Six pack shirtless photos. Like if you're playing up that sex appeal with shirtless photos, that's like one of the categories of pretty boy R&B. Um, and then the other side of it is the dance numbers. So those musicians that have heavily choreographed music. Now you don't have to have, well, typically actually you have to have the prettiness. So the six pack stuff to kind of qualify, but in terms of like the dancing, that's like not all of them have it, right? Like Trey Songz doesn't dance, but he's still a pretty boy R&B singer. Um, who else would I say? What's that guy again? Whew, wow. I don't know. His name has escaped me from the 90s. The guy that, um, wow, I can't believe I don't remember his name. He's so popular. The guy with that music video that he was completely shirtless in the whole video, that's pretty boy R&B, right? So that's what I would define pretty boy R&B as. I would say right now in R&B, there are two types, right? It's either the f boy r&b star which is like super super popular um and those are those guys are super mainstream i mean when you look at their their streams they have 30 million plus monthly streams then the other kind is more of the mellow chill r&b star um they're not pretty boys they're not traditional pretty boys they might be handsome but they're not traditional pretty boys and they're not doing the dance routines and stuff like that. And I would put Givion, I would put Lucky, I put Khaled in that category. Um, and when you look at their streams, apart from Khaled, I think Khaled has incredible streams. Uh, but when you look at their streams, they're not hitting, they're not in the 30 million monthly streams. And that's like just on Spotify. Obviously, when you add their Apple Music, you add all the other, maybe you times it by three, and that's probably what they get on Apple Music and YouTube Music and all the other platforms. But either way, I just wouldn't put... Um, Give you on under Pretty Boy R&B, nor would I put Lucky under Pretty Boy R&B. Um, I think that one thing about Lucky, I really feel as though is if he really leaned more into that F boy thing, because you can see that he's kind of like dancing around it. He's he hasn't fully committed into the toxic lover kind of thing. And I'm not saying that he needs to sing toxic lover songs, but if he approached the look, the future look, I think that he would have sh he would be a way bigger talent you know, if you lean more into that style. So, but either way, um, that's one thing. So another thing is like, aside from that, Miguel, right? I love Miguel. He actually has my favorite songs of all time, Miguel. <laughs> like like he, he doesn't have that much music, but the songs that he does have, those are my favorite R&B songs of all time. More so, I, like my favorite R&B stars are Michael Jackson and Justin Bieber. Usher lover, I love Usher. I used to love Chris Brown until, you know, all that stuff happened. So I'm a big fan of like this R&B genre, the pretty boy R&B. Miguel, I'm sorry, like <laughs> as much as I love Justin Bieber, as much as I love all of them, Miguel is my favorite. In terms of his music, is my favorite. Even more so than, I mean, hey, that's a big statement because I love Justin Bieber and I love Michael Jackson. So that's a huge statement. 
Um, either way, so let's talk about this, Pretty Boy R&B. So a lot of people pointed out something that I actually didn't bring to the forefront in the last video, and it's the fact that K-pop has taken over Pretty Boy R&B. And that's actually an interesting conversation because it seems as though Pretty Boy R&B is only acceptable when it doesn't come from the traditional lens. Um, but it's like K-pop has taken over that genre. K-pop, they've all done the Pretty Boy R&B thing with more of a modern style. One thing I do love about Korea and Korean culture is the style. They know how to dress. They know how to dress. They know how to dress. I love the style. I love the fashion. I love what they're doing with it. They're taking it to new levels. They're, they're almost feminizing it a little bit in an interesting way. Uh, so K-pop stars, as much as, yes, they have kind of appropriated, not kind of, but they have appropriated Pretty Boy R&B, they've added a new dynamic layer of style that you don't expect. You know, and th this style is almost, is almost like leaning into pop culture, like traditional pop culture. It's just really super interesting. Their style is phenomenal. Um, that's almost why I'm not upset about <laughs> them stealing or them appropriating Pretty Boy R&B because they've done something so different with it, with their fashion um, and all of that. And in a way that you you wouldn't even see the Pretty Boy R&B stars dress the way that these guys in the K these K-pop stars are dressing. And what I would say, I would challenge anyone that is interested in doing Pretty Boy R&B to dress like a K-pop star. As, if, like if you're a black person, dress like a K-pop star and see what happens. <laughs> and they have some, there, there's some um, white stars right now, white pop stars that are, are leaning into that K-pop style, but it's going to look, it's going to look too similar, right? Because like, it's going to look like you're trying to be a K-pop star, but if you're black and you're a pretty boy R&B singer and you lean into that K-pop style, you could do amazing things with that. It would be, I think it, just, it would look really great. So there were a few comments about how The Weeknd is not an R&B singer. Don't call him an R&B singer. <sighs> this is the thing. And there's a conversation about Justin Bieber not being an R&B singer. Don't call him an R&B singer or whatever. Guys, I'm talking about the vocals. I'm talking about the tradition. Sometimes, like, yes, I get it. Pop and R&B has kind of merged into each, each other. That happened especially in... Michael Jackson was the responsible for that. Michael Jackson and a few other people. But let's, let's remember that pop music is popular culture. It's pop. It just means popular. But yes, pop music does have a sound. Um, Michael Jackson is responsible for that merging R&B and pop. But when it comes down to their vocals and their vocal range and what they do with their vocals... It's very R&B. So people that argue and say Justin Bieber isn't R&B, how can you say Justin Bieber is not R&B when he has a whole album that's just R&B? How can you say Justin Bieber is not R&B when, when um, <laughs> literally in every single album that he's ever released, there are at least six R&B songs? And, he, and regardless, he's using R&B vocals. You know, he learned how to sing from watching Boys to Men and all these R&B singers. And I would say Justin Bieber is just as R&B as Usher and Justin uh, and Chris Brown and Michael Jackson. He's he's on the same lane. And I think that just because he's white, just because he's white, people don't classify him as R&B. I'll give you an example. Jason Derulo. You can't even try and pass him off as R&B. It's just not even possible. He doesn't have one R&B song, right? You can't even pass it. You can't even try. And I know that people wanted to do that, and that's why he made sure to stick to the pop sound because you cannot even try and call Jason Derulo R&B, right? And he's black, right? But the thing is, I, and I get it, I get it, like a lot of... Uh, because of the history in music, when you look at uh, cultural appropriation, rock and roll being stolen for black people, country music being stolen for black people, all these things, all, this, all these genres of music that have been stolen from black people, from the blues to all this stuff appropriated and stolen, and, 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 you know, when it came to the 90s, we really gatekept hip hop culture and R&B. We gatekept it and we pushed everybody out. So we were like, no, you cannot classify yourself as R&B because you're going to go and steal it just like you did. We learned the mistakes from the past, from the 60s, the 70s, and, and you know, even before that, how they kind of just stole our, 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 appropriated our music and completely wiped us out. In fact, remember when they used to even steal people's songs? Like you'd have a hit song and then some like Elvis Presley or someone will just like copy your song and steal it. So that has happened so much that... Um, 
in the 90s, we felt the need to gatekeep our music. And unfortunately, because we did that, it kind of created, opened up the doors and created this gateway for um, people in, in, in the tens, once the, the advent of the internet and, and the advent of consumerism on the internet, specifically with music, in the tens, especially around 2010, tw 2009, 2010, 2011, we start seeing this, this rush of white rappers. And not only white rappers, but also white R&B singers. That's actually the time when Justin Bieber made it. That's when we started seeing so many white people, you know, trying to appropriate black culture and before that it was like if you're a singer like a justin timberlake you know you have to be pop you can't you're not allowed to do hip-hop you're not allowed to do r&b and it happened for so long that the internet just opened the door for everyone and because there are no gay gatekeepers in the internet a lot of white people just started doing r&b a lot of white people just started doing those things and as we know they get praised for things a cultural appropriation you know the whole story but my point is long story short I understand the need to gatekeep it because of the history, but I think we have to call a spade a spade. Yes, Justin Bieber is pop, but he's also R&B. In fact, he's just as much R&B as Chris Brown, as uh, Michael Jackson, as Usher. And so if you're going to say that, Chris, that Justin Bieber is not R&B, you have that same energy for Michael Jackson, have that same energy for Chris Brown. That's just my point. Um, so finally, they, there were some conversations about The weekend. The weekend's not... The weekend's not um, R and B. Don't you dare call the weekend R and B anymore. It goes. I, it's the same point. Like yes, in the video I was specifically talking about 2014. I'd say today the weekend is not R and B at all. He's. I can't even listen to his music, even though I know he gets so many streams. But I can't. I don't like electronic music. I kind of did like in the tw in the t in t like 2010. I kind. I think all of us liked electronic music in 2010, around 2010, 2009, 2007. I think we all kind of loved that. Right now, I'm not trying to listen to electronic music. I'm not trying to listen to any of that. And but one thing I will say about the weekend is, as much as he is not R&B, he's still doing that Michael Jackson thing. He, the weekend style is very Michael Jackson pre-thriller, so off the wall, all of that. Right now, or he's giving us this electro thing. But at the end of the day, whatever you call it, he's still giving us R&B vocals. You know, he's still giving us R&B vocals. He can't help it. That's just his sound. Um, but I did mention in the video, it was 2014 that the, the change happened and then moving into now. I mean, but anyway, it's an interesting landscape to watch and I'm curious to see what happens. I see a lot of potential opportunities for people. If you're crafting your image as a musician, you have so many, you have so much potential. And I would just say you have to be different. You have to do things differently. So study all the musicians that you see, study their style, study their singing, study like the whole branding of them. And you can like mix and match from different things and be unconventional with it. Just like, all right, I would be unconventional. I would do something different. Um, I would, you know, change things up. But those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all the above. My name is Kenem and see you next time. Peace.